Joining us live from Washington, D.C. is John Erath, Senior Policy Director for the Center for Arms Control and Nonproliferation in Washington and former member of the U.S. delegation to NATO. John, welcome back to WEON. Russia has repeatedly given warnings that should deep strikes be permitted, then Ukraine would bring Russia in a direct confrontation with NATO. Have we crossed that red line at this point? This is the same song that has been played by the Russians a number of times. They did it with uh, fighter aircraft, with HIMARS missile systems, with uh, tanks, with armored personnel carriers, with every uh, type of assistance that has been provided to Ukraine before. Uh, so I don't think that this is a major difference in Russian policy. Uh, they have been making such threats and using such blackmail frequently in the past, and it has been fairly successful in limiting the provision of aid to Ukraine. And John, why is President Biden giving the nod in the final days of his presidency when incoming President Donald Trump has vowed to end the war swiftly? And then there were reports that Michael Waltz, the incoming national security advisor, was not advised of the Biden administration's ratcheting up the war in Europe. Is that normal? It's uh, the Biden administration is still the ones in charge right now, so it is their decision to make. Uh, I don't know what specifically provoked mm -hmm. the decision at this time. It's something that Ukraine has been asking for for some time, and the consideration has been uh, moving very slowly, as these things tend to do with the Biden administration. Uh, and have in the past. So it's part of the normal pattern where the Biden administration has taken a very cautious approach to uh, increasing the kinds of assistance going to Ukraine. Uh, it could be that there are political considerations that it was something to lock in before the transition to the Trump administration, but that's not clear. And, and do you think that the ATA CMs would be a game changer in the Russia-Ukraine war. I know we mentioned that in our story package a little earlier, but what are your thoughts based on your experience? Uh, the attack arms missiles are used by the U.S. forces as uh, high-value, low-density assets. There are not that many of them. They're used to take out very specific targets at very specific times. Uh, not to saturate the battlefield. Uh, so they would be useful for Ukraine in hitting specific Russian targets, command and control points, uh, infrastructure hubs, energy hubs, things like this that have high value that can be hit very precisely. All right. Well, thank you so much for that. Uh, John Erath joining us from Washington, D.C. this morning. I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thank you. You're very welcome.